This is for Heli Pilot 17, and he put a comment on the uh, 412 flight, and uh, he said, "You probably done this a gazillion times, but anyway, could you do a vid of the gear you were using in the 412, trying to figure out a good system for his?" So. I don't know your real name, but Heli Pilot 17, here we go. So, what I use, I have Jetty Radio Systems. This one runs a NASA, which is discontinued at this point. But you can still find them, they're still good. You can plug in the GPS puck, which would require you to put it out, like out here in the tail boom. Doesn't make it very convenient, because you got to take the mechanics out and do that but it can be done and then you can use the gps now the gps is great for stopping like right in the middle of the air and holding it in position but it also has addy mode which you don't need the gps for and that'll get you a level flying parameter so that it doesn't go up and down in pitch very fast you can do it but it it really tames it down and i know a couple of people in our group with scale machines that had a hard time flying got a NASA with a GPS, and now they fly great. I'm talking about you, Tony. So what I've got, and these all came from uh, RC Aerodyne because uh, I did the build thread on this uh, for him when he was in bigger business than what he is now. I have the uh, Scorpion... 40, 35, 530 KV motor in it. That's 10 pole. It's 3,400 watts. And I think I'm flying it around 1,200 to 1,800 watts. This has a Castle 160 with a fan on it. And you can see I put it on this back wall right here. I had to extend the motor wires. And then I just ran a wire down underneath into the battery compartment. And I run two 6S 5000s. And um, what I did is I made I made a little spot for my Velcro to go under and then a battery sit on it so that I can Velcro them down. And I also have my, uh, this is my radio pack. It's just a 3S that runs into a Castle Beck Pro, which is a 20 amp with dual leads that come out i put one lead into the nasa and then i put one lead into my uh receiver for the jetty that's what i'm running i did some mods to the fuselage um i think when you get it the uh the fiberglass comes to like right here well i cut that out because there's a nice big area this is where i put all of my lights all my light controllers all the stuff, the strobes and everything, they all terminate up into here to my light controller, which is a scalerchelis.com light controller, which you can't get no more because he doesn't make them. I did a lot of modifications. I built the, uh, the steps. I built the skids. I built the dummy water tank. Um, I didn't build the minion, but he's in there. And he's like a perfect scale. And uh, this is... For a pilot, he's a one sixth. What is that? Twelve inch. It's a twelve inch pilot, and he's kind of big. I think a ten inch pilot would do really well. And if you wanted to get something like that, you can go to TylerGreyModels.com and get their uh, War Pilots, which I think I have up in the four hundred seven from Roban, and he fits way better. I don't know what else to tell you. There are some newer systems out there. Um, the basics are going to be the same. Uh, this is one of the best flying helicopters I've got. The gearing on this, this is, I believe, a third generation Roban, and they did the gears a lot better. We talk about setting up uh, the geometry on these, and for scale, we put five degrees at the head on the blades, and then we go through and make everything 90 degrees on the bell cranks and all that sort of stuff at mid stick. So if I bring this up to mid stick, which is about right there, uh, yeah, about right there, 
Um, you can see all my bell cranks are 90 degrees. The swash plate is actually tilted forward just a little bit. Um, but you want to start level and then adjust from there. Well, I started level and I had to adjust it a little bit forward. Um, but if you look at my servos, um, <laughs> we went through this big whole thing of, well, you want this to be 90 degrees on your servo. Well, I looked at mine and my servos are 90 degree to the servo and then the rod comes off of it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's probably a degree or two to where uh, you want 90 degrees from the rod on the servo. So... Yeah, I went through and I was like, oh, yeah, you need to have it 90 degrees. And and here I am. I don't have it at 90 degrees. But uh, all the servos are all matched and everything. So these, uh, the rods are straight up and down with the main shaft. You can kind of see here. And then the phasing is done in the NASA. So I have this set up with one of the rotors or the tail boom at 90 degrees. I should be able to run a forward and aft cyclic and this blade not move if I have the phasing correct. And it doesn't move hardly at all. I it's, it's so sensitive. But then you know you've got your phasing correct. If I run uh, left and right, only this blade will move. If I can get it to do it without. <laughs> so there you go. Um, and then, of course... All your cyclics, and you look at mine, it's kind of doing weird stuff. It's going to rear, rear, rear. Well, I have a lot of expo right near center, so that's why you have everything set up mechanically beforehand before you start doing expos and all that stuff, so that it would actually work correctly. If you have this at zero degrees of pitch at mid stick like a lot of the 3d guys do and you say oh well the the pitch is too sensitive i want to add some expo it won't work because you'll be actually flying hover about right there at three quarters of a stick instead of right here in the middle well the your expo only works from right here to there and if you're flying way up here your expo isn't going to be you you're not even going to notice if you have expo added into it my pitch right at mid stick doesn't move very much. I mean, that's it. And I'm swinging that stick. But up at the top, you know, here's the bottom end, here's the top end. But right in the middle, it's really slow. That way, and this is, this is all personal preference. Just for me, I like being able to hover right and, and not have a, a I, I can move my stick a little bit more and the helicopter not be going up and down a lot. But it is a personal preference. You can do a linear curve through all that, have no expo, these things will fly just fine. You just gotta find your little niche of how you do it. There you go, there's my setup. Uh, the the belt, here's, here's a tension on the belt. I'm barely pushing on it. And I just checked my 407, and the 407 was a little bit tighter than this. So I'm pushing it in. It's maybe going 3 sixteenths of an inch in from right there. So it's not so tight. Because if you, if you got this thing super tight, it's going to create drag, and it's going to wear out, and you can destroy a motor because their bearings get tweaked so hard. So... This is about three sixteenths of an inch push in from right there. So that's an important little get you gotcha on there. That's the setup I've got. Uh, it's got the big, these ones have the big giant blades. These are 150 millimeter blades. And so you don't need a whole lot of pitch 
uh, when you're doing this sort of thing. So if you look, there it goes. So at the very top, I have this blade, the tip, the end, the backside edge is pointing right about the edge of the rotor head, the blade grip out there. There is a good place to start with your mechanical setup for your tail. And you do want these set up correctly mechanically. First, somehow put a rate mode that you can switch back and forth from. Like I have uh, a rate mode heading hold. and a heading hold mode. Rate mode. So that I can test how my mechanical setup is in a hover. I bring it up to a hover, flip it into rate mode and see if it's moving in either direction. If it's moving in either direction, you make the proper adjustments to get it to hold pretty much, you know, in the, in a hover. I, I, I usually do it out of ground effect. So, you know, five, six feet up, flip it into heading, uh, flip it into rate mode and check, see how your mechanical is. Anyway, there you go. A uh, nice long 10 minute thing and you can get in here and you can uh, you can get your set up and see how you do. But anyway, I hope this helps and uh, let me know. Give me a video whenever you get your set up and all that kind of good stuff and we'll see uh, how it goes. All right, and something else you might want to do. I don't know if they're doing it now on the new ones. Probably not. But I divided this top cowl. You can see my cuts here and cut there and then I cut down this way. And I actually take the front off so that I can get to those lights that I showed you. But if you can get this, see where I had to modify it and add all the pins and the woodwork so that I could get in here and you can see the, the woodwork that I had to, to do on the front here with the pinholes and all that kind of good stuff just to support this. Um, this way you can get into this area and get to your motor without having to take the rotor head off. I hate taking rotor heads off. So this was one of the first mods I did. And it's got lots of, of magnets that hold it in plus the pins and all that. See, like I have the magnets up on top. Right there, corresponding with little pieces of tin that I have glued on there, but I've got, uh, you can see the magnet spots right there. They're kind of on the inside. And you can see right where all my magnets and stuff are for here. But yeah, if you can do this, this will save you a buttload of time trying to get stuff on and off and in there. And plus, it's already on a seam that's there, so you don't even notice it. So there you go. That's my setup. Um, hopefully, this gets you in a direction that you're comfortable with. If you have any more questions, you know you, you know how to get a hold of me. Post a video and do your stuff, and I want to see how you do it. Because everybody does this stuff slightly different, and we can always learn. You know, somebody else does something else. Hey, that's cool. So anyway, get out and build something.